Hello everyone, this video covers the derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. So let's start with exponential functions. Before we take the derivatives, let's review some basic properties from exponential functions that you learn in pre-calculus, but just in case you forget to refresh your memory. So remember, in general, an exponential function looks like this. This is the graph. This is usually the point. Uh, 0, 1, x is 0, y is 1, and uh, here the function is a to the x, so we're going to focus specifically right now where the base is, is e, okay, so this is the one we're going to focus everything. So now, <clears throat> some of the properties that are very uh, important to remember for calculus so notice that this never crosses um, the x-axis, and in this way it keeps going to, to infinity. So therefore, if we have, um, if f of x is equals to e to the x, well, clearly you can see from here that the limit as x goes to infinity or e to the x is infinity. So it should be obvious from here. And... <coughs> the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x is equal to zero. Again, it should be obvious that this is going to, to zero. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if we do the negative exponent, so then the graph will look like this. So now in this case, it will be, let's just say g of x is equal to e to the minus x <coughs> and for g of x we'll notice the the limits are just reverse and by that I mean this the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the minus x is zero and in essence remember that this means uh, one over e to the x and as this gets bigger and bigger well obviously this goes to to zero as x goes to infinity okay? and therefore the limit as x goes to minus infinity of this one was going to go to to infinity these limits are going to be very useful not just in calculus one but in calculus two three and so forth so you should definitely uh, memorize this which is very easy to remember then you forgot and just do, draw the graph it should be obvious from there. So that's the first properties. The other one, which is obvious from algebra, uh, you, which you will use a few times, you have b to the n times b to the m. Well, obviously, this is b to the n plus m. And you have b to the n over b to the m. Remember, this is b to the n minus m. <coughs> And the last one related to this is you have b to the n to the m. Obviously, this is b to the n m. Okay. All right, so now let's look into the, the derivative. We already know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But let's just see why that's the case. Okay. So remember on the questions you have on the test, I mean in the last test, if I ask you to find the derivative of this, notice that the slope is increasing all the time. So this is always increasing, so that means it's always going to be positive. So therefore the derivative is going to be always positive. And notice that this is more positive than this one. Or in other words, this slope is bigger than this one. So that's why the graph look exactly the, the same. And this is the only function that has the property that the derivative is itself. So that's why from here we know that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. So that's not news. But from here, the main property that we care is the following, that you have uh, e to the u, where u is a function of x, then the derivative with respect to x of this is going to be e to the u to the x times the derivative of u with respect to x, which is 
pretty much the chain rule. Okay. So for example, if you want to find the derivative with respect to x, let's say of e to the x squared, this will be e to the x squared. In this particular case, u is equals to x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is x squared, or the derivative with respect to x, x squared, which remember we know this is 2x. So therefore, the derivative will be 2x e to the x squared. Okay. So I highly suggest you memorize this, because this is the one we're going to be using many times from now on. All right, so now let's review the logarithmic um, functions. This is the graph of ln x, and again, we're going to focus on f of x equals to ln x for now. Remember, this is the same thing as log when the base is e, and it is very similar if the base is not e, but e is the most important base, so that's why we will focus on this for now only. Uh, so some of the properties that you need to remember from pre-calculus you're going to be using over and over are the following. Okay. The first one is that if you have ln of a times b that is equals to ln of a plus ln of b. If you have ln of a over b this is equals to ln of a minus ln of b you have ln of a to some power this will be equals to k ln a and um i mean this should be obvious this is not a property per se but this is a result ln of e is always always one All right so now let's take a look at the the limits so remember if f of x is equals to ln x then you can see that the limit as x goes to infinity so as this goes to infinity clearly this is going to to infinity so the limit of f of x will be also infinity all right so notice that you cannot go to minus infinity because the domain is from zero to to infinity for ln x so therefore the limit as x goes to zero notice that you are approaching to zero from the right side and the limit of that of f of x is actually minus infinity all right so now let's look into the the derivative so we have done this problem several times now so notice that this is increasing all the time so it's always positive and clearly you can see that this is way bigger than this. Like the slope here could be A, then 7, 6, and so forth. So therefore the graph is going to look like, like this, so the derivative. So if this is F, this will be F, F prime. Okay? Now you look closely, this is technically 1, 1 over X. So therefore from there we get the following property related to derivatives and it's the following the derivative with respect to x of ln x is equals to 1 over x now if we combine this with the, the chain rule so the derivative with respect to x of ln of some function of x is going to be 1 over u of x times the derivative with respect to x of u. Okay. So for example, let's say that f of x was equals to ln of x squared plus 1. So then here this is u of x. So f prime is going to be 1 over u of x times the derivative with respect to x, which is nothing more than the chain rule. So the derivative that is 2x, so it will be 2x over x squared plus 1. And that's it. 
All right, so now that we know what's the derivative of ln x, then we can use it with the previous formulas and the previous derivatives we used before to find more derivatives. So here, y prime, notice that this is a this is a product, okay? So it's this times that. So remember, we use the product rule is the derivative of the first one, which is 2x times the second one plus the derivative of the second one, which we know is 1 over x times the first one. So then this would be 2x ln x plus x. That's it. Now, in the next example, we have to use implicit differentiation. Now, remember, I just showed you this property, that ln of yx is the same thing as ln of y plus ln of x. We just don't forget them. So therefore, from here, we take the, the derivative. Notice that this is a product, so you have to use the product rule. So this will be 2x times y plus the derivative of the second one, which is y prime. Remember, we talked about that in the previous video with the implicit differentiation times the first one. And then now, and you just have to be careful here, the derivative of ln y is going to be 1 over y times y prime. Remember that you always multiply by y prime if you're taking a derivative of y plus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, and then the derivative of e to the y, it will be e to the y times y prime. And remember, we're trying to solve for y prime, so we have y prime in here, in here, and in here. So we factor y prime, this will be x squared plus 1 over y, and then minus e to the y. And then you move everything else to the other side, so it will be minus 1 over x minus 2xy. So therefore y prime will be equals to minus 1 over x minus 2xy divided by x squared plus 1 over y minus e to the y. Okay. You can simplify this a little bit more by factoring the minus sign, but it's not, not needed. All right, so now let's say that we're trying to find the derivative of this function. Notice that this is a caution, so technically you could use the caution rule, but that would be very, very messy. So instead, what we're going to do and you should do this trick every time you have something this messy, is we're gonna use logarithms to make life easier. And remember, we're gonna use this, this property. Remember that ln of a over b is equals to ln of a minus ln of b, and ln of a to some power that is equals to k ln a. Okay? So what we do is we apply ln to both sides, so this will become ln y, then using these properties, this is going to become ln of x squared plus sine x to the 6th power minus ln of 2x cubed minus 6 to the 8th power using this property. Now using the following property, which is this one, the exponent goes in front, so it will be 6 ln of x squared plus 9x minus a ln of 2x cubed minus 6. And then, so now you can take the derivative. So take derivative now. Remember the derivative of this one is going to be y prime over y. It will be 6. The derivative of this, remember, is 1 over the argument, which is x squared plus sine x, times the derivative of the inside, where the derivative of the inside is 2x plus cosine x, and then minus a. The derivative of this will be 1 over 2x cubed minus 6 times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the inside, or the derivative of this will be 6x squared. Okay. 
right? So if we simplify a little bit more, we have y prime over y is equals to multiply by six. This will give you twelve x plus six cosine x over x squared plus sine x, and then this will be minus. 48x squared over 2x cubed minus 6. <clears throat> and then remember that you're trying to solve for a y prime, not y prime over y. So from here, y prime will be y times all of this. But remember that y originally was equals to, to this. So therefore, this will be uh, x squared plus sine x to the 6th power over 2x cubed minus 6 to the 8th power times all of this. And that's it. Now, logarithmic differentiation is also very useful for functions like this. So notice that here you have x to another function of power of x. So a very common, so common mistake to avoid so don't do this if you have remember x to the 6 the derivative of x to the 6 is 6x to the fifth so this is this is okay but if you have let's say um tangent x to the x this is not equals to x tangent uh, x to the x minus 1 okay so this doesn't work so this is not not good so whenever you have a problem like this the best way to do it is to use logs so again we have ln y it will be ln of x of tangent x and the only reason why we do this is we use property 3 remember the exponents go in the front so therefore this will be ln y is equals to tangent x times ln x. Now you can take the, the derivative. This remember is y prime over y. This is a product, so you have to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first one is second square times the second one, plus the derivative of the second one times the first one. And then finally to solve for y prime, just multiply by y with this. Or <coughs> y remember was equals to x tangent x and then times second square x ln x plus one over x tangent x, which you can see is very, very different than, than this. Now what about you have a function like this? Remember, we already know that if f of x was equals to e to the x, the f prime is just e to the x. But what about the base is now e? Well, then the derivative is this. It will be phi to the x, which is similar to this. But you need to multiply times ln of phi. So notice that technically this is what we do here because f prime is technically e to the x times ln of e, but ln of e is 1. So that's why you don't have to keep writing it. And this will apply also if you will have the chain rule. So let's say you have f of x is equals to phi of to the 4x. So that then f prime will be phi to the 4x times ln phi times the derivative inside, which will be 4. So it will be 4 times phi to the 4x times ln phi. All right, so finally, uh, let's just do a recap of all the derivatives we have found so far. So I have a list here, not necessarily the most important first, but you have the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, we did this one today, the derivative of ln, and we also did the derivative of um, e to the x right now, and we did these two on the last video. 
So these are the most common derivatives you're going to find. These are not the only ones. These are the three rules you can use all the time, but this will be the most common ones. So if you uh, know how to use these derivatives, you will be able to do pretty much almost anything. For example, let's say we have the following here. So this is asking to find the derivative of tangent inverse of e to the x squared. Well, according to number six, y prime should be 1 over 1 plus e to the x squared square times the derivative respect to x of e to the x squared. Now remember the derivative respect to x of e to the x squared, we did this one earlier, is e to the x squared times 2x. So therefore this will be 2x e to the x squared divided by 1 plus e to the 2x squared. Alright, finally, uh, this is a function of u, so therefore we're gonna go with number 4. Remember y prime is gonna be 1 over sine inverse of 2x squared times the derivative with respect to x of sine inverse of 2x squared. Now sine inverse is right here. So this would be 1 over sine inverse of 2x squared. The derivative of this is going to be 1 over 1 minus 2x squared squared times the derivative with respect to x of the inside, which is 2 x squared. <coughs> so therefore, you simplify everything, this will be 4x, that will be the derivative of this, divided by sine inverse of 2x squared, times the square root of 1 minus 4x to the 4. And that's it. So again, the derivative of this is this part, This is just this, and then the derivative of sine inverse is this part, and that's it. So using these rules, you should be able to take the derivative pretty much anything.